Hello, welcome to the channel. It's W3 here. In today's Python tutorial video, we're going to be doing boom, 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 motion detection. We're going to be creating our own motion detection camera. It's not too difficult, it's not too easy, but it's pretty straightforward. And I'm going to show you a clip straight away. So, first, we're going to have to start with our imports like we always do. So, we're going to do imports. And we're going to import CV2. Now, that's not in the standard library, I don't think. So, you're going to have to get it like you do other libraries that you've probably installed, etc. And they're using for Python. Just Google it or something. And then we're going to import time, import date time. And we're going to import mutils. And I'll give you the link or a github page where you can get the immutils and then use that folder etc and import that actually I'll just quickly show you something for immutils gonna go to the github you can install it by doing pip install immutils so it's as easy as that but it says here provided you already have numpy scipy matplotlib and opencv installed that immutils package is completely pip installable so yeah just pip install numpy scipy whatever it says basically here and then just pip install immutils and then yeah you'll be able to carry on with the code so let's carry on we're going to create a function because it's quite a bit of code so we're going to do def motion underscore detection so we're going to have to do video underscore Capture equals CV2 dot capital V video capital C capture parentheses and then we're going to index to where our, our device is where our webcam device is now I'm going to put zero because zero is the default setting for the default webcam on your system you know the integrated webcam in your laptop etc if you're using a wireless one or you've got one you plugged it in Maybe it'll be one, maybe it'll two. You might have to look at your webcam interface or your settings or preferences on the system. But it'll probably be one or two. But zero is the default. And then we're going to do time dot sleep and then two. And then what we need to do is we need to instantiate the first frame. So we're going to do first underscore frame equals none. Then we're going to do while true. And then we're going to do frame equals video underscore capture dot read and then square bracket one and that's because we're indexing to one because video underscore capture dot read has two values in a tuple the ret val and its frame we just need the frame so that's why we've done that frame equals that dot read and then we index to one so let's move on so now we can do text equals unoccupied basically what that's going to do is when the web when we turn this pro when we run this program first of all it's going to be set up there's going to be no motion and it's going to take one frame and the first the first is going to take its first frame and it's going to have the text unoccupied and then those pixel values and um, and whatnot we'll, we'll have a setting basically as we go through the code I'll tell, I'll tell you when we get to the setting and basically once once the threshold is above a certain pixel value or below a certain pixel value it will either go black or white and basically what the first frame is doing it's going to go basically black or mostly black and then when we get the other frames as as it's a video it's made up of frames as we get the other frames of us moving or someone in the motion or someone in the picture those pixels will hopefully go white and then we've got white on black White's moving across black, motion is detected, and that's how we get our motion detection. And obviously we're going to have a screen, we're going to have a green square around that white picture. And then obviously at the end we'll pop up the three screens, the threshold screen, the grayscale image, and then just the normal video image. And obviously if you were to use this in real life, you can actually get rid of those two other screens and just have the normal one. With the, and it will just look like you've got a green box around the moving person. But for the tutorial, we'll load up the grayscale image 
so we can show you that and we'll do the threshold image as well the black and white so you can see how it actually works um, in basically yeah in depth a bit more and actually what is going on behind the scenes it's the black and white that's actually getting the motion you know so let's continue hopefully I explained that a little bit okay for you to understand you know so we need a gray scale underscore frame and that's because to do a threshold to do the threshold image we've got to start from a gray scale frame you know we can't have all these colors that doesn't make sense no we'll have the gray scale frame and what that does is that's going on the side of either it's a light pixel or it's a dark pixel and we'll set the threshold as we go through the code that's how we're going to be doing this All right so cv2 dot cvt capital c color and then we're going to put the frame in there and then cv2 dot capitals color underscore bgr for blue green and red they're the three sort of main main colors bgr and then we're going to do two and then gray next we need to do gaussian underscore frame and that's going to equal cv2 dot gaussian blur and what we're going to use is the grayscale underscore frame so we're using grayscale underscore frame so we took in the frame we've made it grayscale and then we're going to blur it gaussian blur we're going to smooth the image 21 21 what that is relating to that's basically the kernel the image kernel if you've ever heard of that basically what it is is a grid 21 by 21 the reason it's odd is because if we used even numbers the center of the grid wouldn't be valid it'd be invalid because there would be no center so we've got to use odd numbers so that there is one integer in the middle what happens is that one integer in the middle that becomes the value for the whole 21 by 21 grid and then zero that's for um, any sort of uh, leak any sort of leakage basically like a boundary um, like a boundary sort of thing basically basically we just set it to zero but yeah that's a that's a grid so a kernel I put an image of that up now so you can uh, realize what it is sort of thing let's move on to the next bit same again we're gonna blur underscore frame and that's gonna equal cv2 dot blur and we're gonna take in Gaussian underscore frame. So we're taking in now that frame there, which has took in the grayscale frame. The grayscale frame has took in the normal frame. And same again, it's going to be a kernel. It's going to be an image kernel grid five by five. And that what that's going to do is it's going to go from left to right all the way down the image, and it's going to blur the pixels basically using the middle value usually. Or it'll do some sort of calculation with them with the numbers in the grid and it would move left to right across the image. So let's move on. So now we need to do if first underscore frame is none. First underscore frame equals <clears throat> gray scale underscore image. Else pass. And basically what that's doing is the first frame is set as basically for the background subtraction so when we do the abs diff as we go down the code the absolute difference basically when we do the absolute difference between the first frame which is um, our baseline frame if you say when we set the camera up there's going to be no one in it no motion it's running it's got that one frame and that's going to be the baseline basically Hopefully all them pixels will pretty much go black or towards the black side. And then obviously as we go through the frames, because the video is made up of frames, once there's a motion, it will capture the next frame, the next frame, the next frame, a lot of frames. And it will do the absolute difference between that frame and the first frame, next frame and the first frame, next frame and the first frame. And it will compare them. And what that will do is basically that will give us motion black background the new image the new object in the image will have be white you know because both frames will have the same background except for the new object that's in 
the new frames and it will compare them and then it will be yeah the white object which is now in the frame compared with the first frame which doesn't have that object in it and they, that's basically what it's going to be for uh, you'll hopefully understand that as we go down and do a bit more of the code so let's continue so we now need to do frame equals in utils which is the library uh, that we've imported earlier dot resize and then frame and then width equals 500 and basically what we're doing here is we're resizing the frame because we put frame in here we give it the value frame we're resizing it to have a width of 500 so we're just resizing the frame basically next we're going to do frame underscore delta equals cv2 dot abstiff and we're going to do first underscore frame and gray scale underscore image so basically what frame delta is doing is doing the absolute difference between the first frame pixels and then the gray scale image and that's gonna obviously go towards our motion detection so let's continue next we're going to do the threshold so we're going to do a variable called fresh and that's going to equal cv2 dot threshold and then we're going to do frame underscore delta 100 225 and then cv2 dot fresh underscore binary and then we're going to index it to one and as you can see here with the comments i'm trying to do a few comments as i go as well so you can read them get a bit more understanding as you can see here the threshold gives two outputs vet ret val and the threshold image so using the one the one in the square bracket here we're indexing to the threshold image and not ret val and yeah that's why we do that so we're selecting the threshold image and that's what fresh will equal so let's move on next we're going to do dilate underscore image equal cv2 dot dilate and then fresh none and then iterations equals two and i've written another comment as you can see dilate equals dilate grow expand so the effect on a binary image black background and white foreground is to enlarge slash slash expand the white pixels in the foreground which are white 255 and using the 3 times 3 kernel matrix and iterations equal to means it will do it twice so it will go over the image twice what it's going to do is when it reach, when it hits the white pixels it's going to just enlarge the area of the white pixels a little bit just so it stands out a little bit more and that's what we need to do so that's what that is and obviously the foreground is the image of the, is the frames or the images of us in them and the background is obviously going to be the first frame basically if you think about it like that let's continue and move on so next we need to create a variable called cnt which will stand for contours or contour so cnt equals cv2 dot find capital c contour contours actually and then we're going to use dilate underscore image and we also need actually one second dilate underscore image and dot copy actually we want to copy of that dilate underscore image we don't want to actually change that we want to just cop a copy of it and i'll explain more a bit later then we're going to do cv2 dot capitals retro underscore external and then cv2 dot capitals chain underscore approx underscore simple and then we're just going to index one and I'm going, to ex I'm going to explain that right now. So as you can see, I've written another comment just to explain it a bit better for you guys. 
So basically contours, which is this variable here, contour gives three different Im outputs. It gives image, contours, and hierarchy. So that's why we're indexing it to one, because we just want the image. So using one on the end means contours equals one contour. So we get the image basically, yeah. CV2 dot chain underscore approx underscore simple. What that does is it saves memory by removing all redundant points and compressing the contour. So basically, if you've got a rectangle with four straight lines, instead of instead of have say the line starts here and it ends at say this comma, instead of doing this point 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 point, basically making lots of little points until it gets to the end of the line what chain on underscore prox underscore simple does is it makes it simple and you 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 lose you use less memory so basically you make a point here you make a point there and it'll just join it from that point to that point instead of doing all the little points to get to that point and then it does the same going down across and basically it makes the square by just doing four points one two three four and joins them all together instead of doing lots of little points all the way around which you know it could go up to 750 points that's a lot of memory which we're, we're making it down to four so as you can see that's a big difference it's a lot faster uses a lot less memory and it's just better we've optimized it and yeah so let's move on to the next step i hope you've understood that, that a little bit better let's move on to the next bit now we're going to do four c in C and T, so four item in C or for the contour or contours in contour. If CV2 dot contour capital A area parentheses C is greater than 800, basically what that means is if contour area is less than 800, so non zero, not black, pixels are white. So basically, if, if the contour area yeah, is, is less than the value that we put here, we've set it to 800. You can change that depending on maybe the light in the room and that, but I'd leave that alone, first of all. There's something else you can change. So I'll, let, I'll get to that when we get to it. But what it's, what it's doing is what it says, really. Yeah, if it's less than, eight, if, if it's less than 800. Or, oh, no, this is saying if CV2.contour area is greater than 800. So if it's less than 800, it's going to be white. If it's greater than 800, it's going to be black, basically. Let's move on to the next step. And then we've got X, Y, width, and height, WH, equals CV2 dot bounding, capital R, rect, and then C. As you can see, I've put another comment in here to help you understand it a bit better. X and Y are the top left of the contour so if you think of a square box x and y are the top left and wh are the width and the height so i hope that makes sense let's move on so next we need this just copy and paste it so a bit of time we need cv2 dot rectangle and then we're putting the frame in and then we got x and y and then we got x plus width y plus height what that is doing is that's going to be creating the rectangle on the normal frame which is this going to be the same as if you were to look through your webcam normally that's what this normal frame is and we're going to be drawing the green rectangle because this 0 255 and 0 that stands for RGB so that's going to be the color of the lines color of a rectangle and then we got 2 which is going to be the thickness we're not using obviously the threshold image or the grayscale image because that's for obviously the motion detection. The threshold image is for motion detection, the black and the white. The first frame is obviously black or dark. And then once you once there's movement, it'll take a picture of and it'll be another frame. And then there'll be a new object in, in the frame, which is a person or the hand. And that'll be white, white on black. The absolute difference has changed the threshold has changed that's the motion and then we obviously draw the green box around that white object on our normal frame 
and that will be around the person or the object that's moving and that will be like our normal security feed frame so let's move on to the next bit we'll do text equals occupied because obviously if there is a rectangle then it's occupied basically move on and then we can just do else pass so let's continue so now we need to do the font that's going to be on our security feed so we do that by creating a variable font and then equal cv2.font underscore hershey underscore simplex that's going to be the style of our font next we need to do cv2.put text and then the frame because we're going to be putting text on the normal frame like I said with the green rectangle it's going to be on the normal frame and then we do format then we can do that and then we can do room status and then we can do curly braces text so we can have the room status next tuple 10 20 what that is is that's going to be in the left hand corner of the frame and 10 and 20 is going to be the height and the width so it's going to be 10 across or and 10 and 20 down or 20 down 10 across i'm not too sure i can't remember but basically it's going to be in the top left hand corner next we need the font and then we can do 0.5 which would be the size of the font and then next we need to do the color which is 0, 0, 225, no, 255, which will be red. So the text is going to be red. And then another comma, and then 2. We'll just do the thickness of the text is going to be 2. It's thickness of the lines, etc. text. So let's move on. So I've written another comment just so you can read it. Hopefully you understand it a little bit better. Um, basically what this is this is going to be this is the text that's in the top left hand corner of the, stay in the room status occupied unoccupied next we need to do the date and time which is going to be at the bottom of the frame so let's go ahead and do that so for the date and time at the bottom of the frame same sort of principle we're going to do cv2 dot put text we're going to do that on the frame we're then going to do date and time like this, date time dot date time dot now, and then dot string f time, basically string format time. And then we're going to format the time by doing that. We've got the year and the date basically, and then we've got the hour, minutes, seconds, and the percent piece probably like point something, something milliseconds. So now we can do da 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 da. And then we can carry on. We got to keep. We got to do the text. No, we haven't. We got to do the position. So we're going to do ten, and then we're going to do frame dot shape square bracket zero minus ten. So basically, however many pixel height the frame is, by doing frame dot shape zero, we're selecting the pixel height, and then we're minus ten. So we can go, we're going inwards basically, we're getting it in the left hand corner at the bottom. And then we also need to do the font again. And then we can do the size, 0 0.35, a little bit smaller. We also need the colour, again, so 0, 0, 0.0255, it's going to be red. And the thickness, we're going to choose one, a little bit less thicker than the top room status. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's right. Then we just need to do cv2 dot i'm show i'm show what that'll do is that'll load up a, like a screen application and this this here the string this is what's going to be written on the top like the sublime text got written up here we're gonna have security feed for the main frame which is the normal frame that looks normal if there's an object in there it will have the green box around it it will only know if an object's in there because of the threshold which is the black and then the white, the white object in the new frame and then frame delta, that's the grayscale image and that's just to show the different like um, frames that we've used and basically what they're doing but obviously if you're just doing the security feed you'd only, you'd only need to load up just the normal frame 
let's move on next we got to do key equals cv2 dot weight key and then one and 0x ff now the reason we're using 0x ff as well is because 0x ff is re representing 8 bits basically it's representing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 represent 8 bits that are all like that are ones basically what that means is that when we do if key is e is equal to ord and then q so when we press q we will get the number because we're using ord basically what we've done is key key equals cv2 dot weight key one and those eight bits so basically i've written a comment just to help you out if you don't understand it so 0xff is a hexadecimal constant which is 1111111111 in binary by using bitwise and with this constant it leaves only the last 8 bits of the original in this case whatever cv2 dot weight key 0 is or whatever it is so we're using basically we can use the last 8 bits because that just refers to 8 bits basically so let's move on cv2 dot destroy all windows and then break and then to finish off we just do if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore motion underscore detection what that's saying is if name equal to main what that's saying is when we run the program when we run this specific file it will run this function here which will run all the code if we were to import this file into another python file if we imported it it wouldn't run any of that code because it can only run the code if name is equal to main if we're running that specific file on its own if we import it it won't run that if it doesn't run that it's not running any of this code so that's it guys thanks for watching now I'll show you a little bit of it again, of it working. So just a quick one, obviously the light in, if you've got sunshine coming through your window, the lights on, that can affect what settings you might need to change, etc. on the threshold, because obviously we're doing an absolute difference here. So the settings you'd want to be messing around with is going to be the threshold, so fresh. Basically these, this one here is what you're going to want to change. What this is saying is any pixel that has a value of over 100 now obviously it's going to be using the grid and it's going to be having the grayscale scale it's going to be doing all that stuff for you and then once a pixel is once it's over 100 that pixel will be classed as white so that's how we've basically got the grayscale we've blurred it out it's sort of you know the darker colors it's black and then the new frame has our body or our hand on it that's going to be over 100 on the value and then it will go straight to white and that's how we got the white object over the sort of black image on the threshold screen which is this one here the threshold that's why we got the black background and the white image when I'm moving my hand across and obviously the security feed is just the frame with the rectangle etc just thought i'd add that in there if you want to mess around with the settings because you might you might need to do that i don't know but yeah that's it so let's let's have a little test again as you can see once i move my hand in front of the camera it's occupied and when it leaves it's unoccupied we've got the date and time at the bottom we've got room status at the top which is unoccupied and now it's occupied and that's because of the black screen which is called the threshold screen or the foreground mask and basically what that's doing is is setting a certain pixel value pixel color black so then obviously when my hand goes in it's lighter skinned that goes white so it's white and black so it's binary basically we've got two options black or white so the background and everything will be black 
because it meets a certain criteria, goes black pixel, my hand meets the other cri criteria, and it goes white. And that's how we see people. And that's how we can track if it's occupied or not. So that's it for this video guys, hope you've enjoyed it, hope you've learnt something new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more great content in the future, uh, join join the reddit page if you want, the reddit little subreddit I got, if you want to ask any questions or you need help with anything don't be afraid to ask, leave a comment, message me, I'm fine with answering any of your questions or helping you guys out, and see you in the next video, bye.